Hi, my name is Alan from the High Speed Signal Path Applications Group at National Semiconductor. In this video, I'll be discussing the clock alignment and synchronization features of the LMK04800. The LMK04800 is a highly uh, configurable and high performance clocking device for wireless infrastructure and other high performance applications. One of the key applications is shown here in this uh, system block diagram, where we have a wireless base station radio unit. The LMK04800 provides multiple low jitter clocks to various devices such as ADCs, PLLs, DACs, and other high performance devices. In order to synchronize the output clocks and the different devices to, in the system, the LMK04800 must uh, lock its output clocks to a reference clock. That reference clock is recovered uh, from the uh, CIPRI link, which uh, is being fed from the SCAN25100 uh, to the LMK04800. To, pr to provide um, the proper synchronization within the system, the LMK04800 must achieve precise output clock alignment and ensure deterministic and repeatable phase relationships between the input and output. So some of the challenges within the system that need to be overcome include trace length and delays and skew uh, due to the PCB layout and also the clock distribution devices that are used within the system. Here we can see the LMK04800 uh, features that enable precise clock alignment and deterministic uh, phase relationships. Here on the left, we see the, uh, the, uh, the zero delay mode blocks, which allow you to feedback an output clock uh, into PLL1 to close the loop instead of using the VCXO um, feedback clock that's typically used in a cascaded um, configuration. To achieve pr precise clock alignment, each clock distribution block or clock group includes a digital delay um, and analog delay block. Here we can see the zero delay mode uh, uh, view um, within the LMK04800. For, uh, to achieve a fixed relationship of the output clocks with the reference clock, we can use internal feedback uh, where the feedback clock can be selected between any of the even numbered clock outputs. If we need to use an external buffer and achieve a fixed relationship with, with respect to the reference, we can use an external feedback, which would feed back in the clock, clock in one uh, and go through the feedback mux to close the loop. So zero delay helps us to achieve deterministic and repeatable phase relationships between the input and output clocks. Digital delay uh, provides for a coarse uh, uh, phase adjustment uh, and also allows for a wide uh, adjustment range. So digital delay uh, has an adjustment range of 4.5 to 522 clock distribution path cycles and has a resolution of half a step size. As you can see here, we have an, ex uh, an example where we're using a 3 gigahertz VCO frequency. The 3 gigahertz VCO frequency has a period about, of about 333 picoseconds, which gives us a delay uh, adjustment range of 1.5 nanoseconds to 174 nanoseconds, and a step size of about 167.5 picoseconds, which is a half cycle of the 3 gigahertz VCO frequency. Analog delay uh, provides even finer uh, phase adjustment range than di uh, digital delay. With analog delay, we have a 25 picosecond step size and adjustment range of 0 to 475 picoseconds, which, is, which has a total of 24 steps. So this provides even finer compensation for trace length mismatch between the outputs. And enabling analog delay will add 500 picoseconds of delay and increase your phase noise floor and current consumption of the device. So to demonstrate the uh, precise clock alignment and synchronization features of the LMK04800, we have the uh, LMK04800 evaluation board. Here we're um, feeding a 122 
a megahertz reference clock into the splitter, which provides a reference clock for the device, and then also provides that clock to um, clock out uh, to channel four of the uh, scope, which is showing uh, here by the green trace. That reference clock is being used to lock the PLLs and generate a 2, 2949.12 megahertz VCO frequency locked to the reference. That VCO frequency is then divided down by the clock distribution stage uh, and we're outputting on two separate clock out channels uh, 122.88 megahertz LVC MOS clocks. One of the outputs is being fed through this short cable into channel one, which is uh, this yellow trace. And on the second uh, cable, we're outputting another 122.88 megahertz clock uh, into channel two, which is the blue trace. So as you can see here, due to the cable mismatch, we have a, a phase uh, offset uh, between the two traces. Um, I'm also showing the green trace so that we can see the deterministic input to output phase relationship enabled by zero delay mode. I'm internally feeding back the, um, uh, one of the output clocks uh, to the PLL1 so that I can achieve uh, a known phase relationship between the input and output clock. So in order to de-skew the two clocks, I'm going to delay the, uh, the, shorter, the output with the shorter cable um, using the digital delay mode. So each phase of the digital delay um, provides about 340 picoseconds of delay uh, per step. Once I get close enough, I can switch over to the analog delay and provide even finer uh, adjustment until the clock output phases are precisely aligned. And as you notice, uh, the input phase uh, didn't change relative to the output whenever I adjusted the, um, the delays of the digital delay. And that was a function provided by the zero delay mode, uh, which minimizes the uh, output clock disturbance uh, when adjusting the delays and also achieves uh, a known phase relationship between the output and input clocks. So as you can see, the LMK 04800 provides precise alignment and synchronization for wireless infrastructure applications. Please visit national.com timing for more information and thanks for watching.